Good night, everyone. God is truly good. And he's real. And he knows everything that's taking place in our lives. And that is why we can lean on him and trust him. Because he always has a word for us in season. So let's turn in our Bibles first and foremost to the book of Deuteronomy. Which is the fifth book of the Old Testament. For those of you who may not be familiar. Deuteronomy chapter 20. Are we all there? Are we all there? Yes. Okay. We're going to be reading just four short verses, and we're going to be beginning at verse 1. It says, When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, and seest horses and chariots, and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be when you are come nigh unto the battle, that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people, and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, you approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. And all the saints say, Amen. 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 Tonight, God wants to speak to us about battles. It's very clear from the text that we just read, read. A word that none of us like, but a word that appears 319 times in the Bible, which tells us that battles are part of our lives here on earth. A battle, brethren, is not a toothache, as some people believe or the fact that our dog ran away from home, or that someone has not spoken to us for the day. A battle speaks about combat. It speaks about conflict. And it speaks about war, usually between forces which are opposed to each other. It is said that the Christian life is not a playground but rather a battleground. We have an enemy. We have been given spiritual weapons and spiritual armor. And we have been given delegated authority. Not to play hot hopscotch or golf, but to help us overcome every obstacle in life. You see, brothers and sisters, there is an unseen war that is raging between the powers of darkness and between the kingdom of God, which involves you and me, which involves our families, our jobs, our health, and all that concerns us. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12 tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the, of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The Bible tells us that we wrestle against these things, but we don't see them. It's an unseen war that is raging. We don't see the spiritual forces that are working against us. We don't see 
the principalities and the powers and the rulers of darkness. The only thing that we do see is the visible entities that are being used by the devil that are before our very eyes. We see people. We see a spouse. We see infirmity. We see the devices and schemes of wicked men and women. And that is why it is so hard at times to believe God and to trust him because we're not seeing what is happening behind the scenes. Throughout the entire Bible, the Old Testament in particular, there are numerous accounts of battles that the people of God faced. Actually, the entire, like the entire Old Testament is only about battle after battle after battle. From the first day that the children of Israel left Egypt, they encountered a battle. To the day that they entered into the promised land, to the time of the kings of Israel, right up to our present day, the people of God has and will continue to encounter battles in one form or another. So we really shouldn't be surprised or taken off guard when we too are faced with conflict in our lives because it comes with the territory of being on the Lord's side. And that's a great side to be on, on the winning side. The Bible does not tell us if you go out to battle. It tells us when we go out to battle. It doesn't tell us if, it tells us when, which suggests that battles are inevitable, they are unavoidable, and they are certain. From our text tonight, the Lord wants to give us the assurance that he is with us in every battle. We are not alone. And he wants to give us that assurance, those of us who may be in the midst of some kind of crisis situation in our lives. How many of you know that the Lord cares for us as his people? How many of you know that? Do you know that the Lord loves you? That he loves us as his people? Yes, he does. He knows what we are going through. He sees all that is happening in our lives. He knows how hard it gets sometimes. He knows how weary we feel, how discouraged we get. Remember, he is our great high priest who experienced all of these things when he walked this earth. He's touched, the Bible says, with the feelings of our infirmities. So when we are down and when we feel that nobody knows what we are going through and nobody cares, I want us all to realize tonight that Jesus cares. And that is why he is reaching out to us tonight to encourage our hearts. Our text begins in verse 1. And it says, when thou goest out to battle against thine enemies and seest horses and chariots and a people more than thou, the Lord is saying to us, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Here, the Lord was speaking to Israel through Moses regarding the enemy forces that were arrayed against them. We need to note the word tonight, the word seest. He said, when thou seest horses and chariots and a people more than thou, our sight, brothers and sisters, can either work for us or against us, depending on what we focus on. If we focus only on that which is before us, which is the problem, the threats, the situation, 
the people that are involved, how big the situation is, how powerful the players are, what we have, what we don't have. Naturally, if we focus only on those things, we would become afraid. Actually, we might become terrified. Because looking at these things in the natural, without God, can be quite unnerving. The Lord did not say, when you see horses and chariots. He said, when thou seest, which suggests a continuous action of seeing. You see, there's a difference between a look and a gaze. There is a difference between seeing something and focusing on it. And focusing only on the negative situations that are before us. And what people are saying and what they are doing to us can blind us from seeing the greatness of our God. Now I'm not talking here about denying a situation, that a situation exists. We're talking about focusing on it only because focusing only on the things that are natural the things that are before us can blind us from seeing God and how great he is and how powerful he is and how sovereign and supreme he is above anything that may seem great in our eyes Faith, brothers and sisters, and faith and fear cannot operate in our hearts at the same time. Faith and fear cannot operate in our hearts at the same time. It is either one or the other will be in control of our hearts. Therefore, for faith to be dominant, our eyes have to be fixed on the Lord. For faith, our faith to become dominant in our situation, our eyes have to be fixed upon the Lord and fixed upon his word. If we fix it, if we fix our eyes only on our problems and how big they are and how we feel like it's too much for us, then our faith in God will be limited. We will, it will be hard for us to rise above the natural, to rise above that which we see. From the time we lose sight of the Lord and from what he is able to do, we will be dominated by fear. It stands to reason. If we lose sight of the Lord and what he is able to do in the midst of our battle, we will become dominated by fear. And that, brothers and sisters, could be quite overwhelming our sight therefore is the open door to either faith or fear in our lives do we agree our sight is the open door to either faith or to fear it all depends what we are gazing upon the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7 that we are to walk by faith and not by sight. Because there's an unseen realm. There's something that's taking place behind the scenes. There are enemy forces that are coming up against us and using situations and people to come up against us, to affect our walk with the Lord, to affect, our, to affect our lives. And if we do not see life situations for what they are, it will be very easy for us to become overcome by only the things of the natural. Our God is greater than any situation, no matter how big it may seem in our eyes. He's greater. What is walking by faith? The Bible talks about we should walk by faith and not by sight. Walking by faith is simply be believing God and all that he is able to do. That is, all, that is simply what it means. It is believing God 
what he says and all that he is able to do in spite of the fact that we don't see him. That is why it's called a faith walk. We don't see the Lord, <laughs> but we believe in him. Not so? But we need to go beyond believing in him. We need to believe him and all that he is, all his attributes and about his power and what he is able to do. It is simply walking and believing that God is all that he says that he is and that he can do all that he says he can do in spite of the fact that we do not see him with our natural eyes. And it is responding to what God says. It is responding to what God says in his word and what he is saying to us at present in spite of the fact that we do not see him and in spite of the fact of what we do see before our eyes and what is before us. So in spite of what, we, what is before us, faith, walking by faith, is believing in God in spite of the things that we do see. It is believing that he is able in spite of what we do see. It is believing that he is with us in spite of the fact that we do not see him. And so God is saying to us tonight that he is with us. That we are not alone in our predicament. We may feel alone, but we are never alone. He is saying to us that we might feel outnumbered. That we might feel overpowered by whatever we are faced with. But God wants us to know that he is mightier than any force that would come up against us. That we belong to him. You know, we sing this song. We sing this song. But the fact is, do we believe it? That we really belong to him. We are his children. And that we need to believe tonight that he is able to defeat the enemy's plan. And give us the victory in every situation that we are faced with. So regardless of how we feel, we're not called to walk by feeling. We need to walk by faith, knowing, knowing and believing that God is with us and that we are not alone and that he is mighty and that he is able to deal with any, this situation that we are faced with. Remember Joseph in the Bible? A typical of ex example of a person who was outnumbered and overpowered, sadly, by his own brethren. He was the only brother that was dealt an unjust hand. Wrong was done to him. And he was a typical example of being outnumbered and overpowered by his own flesh and blood. But what the devil meant for evil brethren, God took and turned it around in Joseph's, in Joseph, in Joseph's life for good and in the fullness of time he was promoted to second in command to Pharaoh and so we need to understand that when God is for us that when he is for us that nobody and nothing can stand against us God not only assured the Israelites of his presence with them he also reminded them that he was the one that brought them out, brought them up out of the land of Egypt. Now there was a reason that he reminded them of this. By this one statement that he made, he reminded, he reminded them of the time in their lives, a time when they were in distress in Egypt under the hand of Pharaoh. He reminded them of that time when they were oppressed, when they were victimized, when they were unjustly treated, when they were persecuted and abused. They were in a situation 
that seemed impossible at that time. It seemed unresolvable. It, was, it, it seemed hopeless. But God, <laughs> but God, their God, our God, he demonstrated his power. He demonstrated his power in a way that caused Pharaoh to bow his knee in the presence of the Lord. And God had a plan that was far greater than Pharaoh's plan, than the enemy's plan. And it was a plan that was far greater than even Israel's expectation. In the fullness of time, in the fullness of time, he said, remember that day that he was the one that brought them up out of the land of Egypt. In that time, unknown to the people of Israel, he raised up a man called Moses, who he had prepared in the background, in the wilderness. He was unknown. He was unseen until the time of God's intervention. And until the time when God was ready to bring them out of their misery. You see, brothers and sisters, all the time when they were crying out to the Lord and they felt that nothing was being done and they felt that God was silent, God was working behind the scenes. He was working a bigger plan that far exceeded the expectation of the Israelites. And all this time, God was silent, but he wasn't absent. He was silent in the midst of their situation, but he was not absent. He was very much present, working out his plan, a plan that was far greater than anything that they could have imagined. And that is why today we need to remember our past battles. When we are faced with this present one, whatever will be facing us that might seem like the big one, we need to call to remembrance our past battles because I'm sure that was, this is not the only one that we have faced. We need to call to remembrance our past battles and all the times that God intervened on our behalf and brought us out of the trying and impossible situations. We need to call to remembrance how bad they were. You know, it's very easy for us to forget, especially when we get delivered from them. Very, very easy to forget how really bad they were, how we felt, how impossible it seemed. But we need to remember the impossible situations that God brought us out of. And remember that he's the same God. He's the same God today in the midst of our situation. The fact that nothing seems to be happening. The fact that nothing seems to be happening in spite of our tears. In spite of our prayers. Doesn't mean that God is absent. He is the same God yesterday. Today and forever and he is working in the background for our benefit just as he did in the days of old when the children of Egypt the children of Israel were in Egypt the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9 but as it is written I had not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. We can't perceive and comprehend the things that God has prepared and is preparing for those of us who love him. Do we love the Lord today? Are we his children? Where the Lord loves us and he cares for us in a way that we could never match. We can't love God the way that he loves us. We can't. 
And that is why in verses 2 and 4, he continues to give the assurance that he will fight for us to save us. It says in verses 2 to 4, he says, And it shall be when you are come nigh unto the battle, that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people and say unto them, Hear, O Israel, you approach this day unto battle against your enemies. He is saying to us tonight, let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. The only way that our hearts would not faint in the time of war is if we are built up in the inner man. The only way we're not going to faint, our hearts will not faint in the time of war is if we are built up in the inner man. We need to be built up in prayer, brothers and sisters. We need to be built up in our relationship with the Lord. We need to be built up in his word. It is coming to a place and being in a position where we know that we know that we know that the Lord, our God, is with us. It's a progressive thing. It is something that is born out of our relationship with the Lord. We sing a song in this church. We sing, I know who goes before me. <laughs> I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever. He is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. You know, those words will be tested in our lives. Do we really know that we know, that we know that he is the one that goes before us, that he stands beside us, that he is always by our side? Or is it just, you know, we could sing these songs and enjoy the music, the melody of the song when things are going good. But you see when the pressure comes and we are being, we are the objects of, of being victimized and being oppressed and unjust things are being done to us. That is where the test lies. Do we really know that the Lord our God is with us? These words that we sing, not just in this, this particular song, but the basic songs that we sing in church are not just empty words. They are all inspired by the word of God and by the spirit of God. And to get to a place of knowing, knowing that our God is with us, because we could just read that and the Lord is saying to us that he is with us, but we don't really believe it. And that is why our hearts faint and we become, in, we become paralyzed and we feel that the situation is hopeless. We can't see God because all we are seeing and focusing on is the things of this natural. But to get to a place of knowing and having that confidence that God, in believing what God says in his word, is not something that happens overnight. It is born out of a relationship with God, from being in close communion with him, in his presence, in his word, and from also going through life's battles. You know, the experiences that we go through is supposed to build our faith in him. It is not just for us to forget and, you know, and just, just discard the ones in the past and we face with this one and we're behaving in the same way that we did when we were faced with a similar situation four or five years ago. Going through life's trials and battles 
It's supposed to bring us into greater levels of faith and understanding in the Lord, where we know that we know that we know that the same God that brought us through then is able to bring us through now. The Israelites didn't face one battle. They faced many. Up to this day, they're still facing battles with the Palestinians and the rest of the world. It's a part of life, and more so, the Christian life. We all are facing and will continue to face battles throughout our lifetime. The fact of the matter is there is no quick fix to get to a place of rest and trust and ultimate confidence in the Lord. Trusting God is something that must be de developed in our lives. It must be developed it is only when we are going through, we are placed in situations of great unrest that we have an opportunity for our faith in God to be exercised. It is the process of God. I mean, it was very easy for the Lord after he delivered the Israelites out of bondage to just wipe out all the enemies in Canaan and make it easy sailing for them to go in and possess the land, but no. He left the enemies right there, and he says, you go and fight, and you conquer. You conquer the land, and it's the same thing in our own personal lives. Actually, going through situations like this, it's a wonderful, and it's an exciting place to be, because we have an opportunity to see God at work. We have an opportunity to see his hand, not just in our circumstances, not just to see how he brings us through, but also to experience his work in us. Because we shouldn't be the same after coming through a trial. And every trial, every difficulty, every battle that we go through, we should come out in a better place, in a greater place of knowledge, a greater place of understanding, a greater place of trust and hope in the Lord. We don't like to hear these things, but it's a fact of life and it's the way the Lord works. And we need to understand how he works so that we could yield ourselves to the process and understand what he's requiring of our lives. So tonight, we want to heed and we want to hear what the Lord is saying to us. Our approach, our attitude, and our focus is key is key in obtaining the victory in every circumstance. Our approach to the situation, our attitude, and our focus is key to obtaining the victory. Let's take our eyes off of the situations that are before us. And let us lift up our eyes beyond the natural, beyond the people, beyond the impossibility of the situation. And let's cast our eyes upon the Lord who is greater, who is mightier, who is all powerful, who is able to work all things out together for our good. Let's lift our eyes beyond the natural and really trust him and know that he is with us in every situation. And so if you have a need tonight, as the choir comes and as we all stand, and you're going through some kind of turmoil, you're going through some sort of battle, the altar is open. And we would like to pray for you as we normally do on a Friday night. Not for the battle to end. <laughs> that is something we have absolutely no control over. We don't have control over it in our lives. And as ministers of the gospel, we don't work abracadabra and say, the battle will cease now. That is up to the Lord. So we're not praying for the battles in our lives to end. We're going to be praying today for strength, for understanding, and that God will give us the grace to go through and that he will work his plan in us 
and that we will see his salvation through it all. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah.
I'm just glad you have a God that fights for you. You know, there are other people who have to fight for their God. Yeah, they, they, their God can't fight for himself. They have, he has to have people fight for them. But our God goes before us. He's at our side. He has our backs. And he's fighting for us. 